the most powerful church in whole Europe. The Kingdom Church presents Bishop Climate Ministries A place where the captives are set free and where the members are wealthy, healthy, and wise. Your breakthrough is now. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Join the vision and be free. Turn with me quickly, turn with me quickly into, into the book of Exodus, into the book of Exodus chapter 13, in the book of Exodus chapter 13. Tonight, I want to be able to welcome you to the school of, uh, not to the school, but also to the, to the school, but also to the, to the service of after sunset, after the sunset healing and miracle service, after sunset healing and miracle service. The Sambo say hallelujah, the Sambo say glory be to God. Say with me, Jesus, I believe I received my victory. In the book of Exodus chapter, in the book of Exodus, Exodus, Exodus chapter 13, I'll be reading from verse 15. Exodus chapter 13, verse 15. It says, in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 13, verse 15. Father, I just want to thank you once again for the Lord God. You have given me the tongue of the land that I may not to speak a word in season to your people. I thank you for the anointing to deliver your word accurately, setting the captives free. Lord, you are everything that we ever needed. You are everything that we ever wanted. We worship you and we praise you. And everybody say, Amen. The Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 13 verse 15 says, And when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of the man and of livestock. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all the males that first opened the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons, I redeem them. Now, this is a very interesting word. Remember, as you begin, as you begin to read that, we see, uh, we see the narrator or the writer is trying to explain to us something, but inside it, prophetic anointing kicks in and suddenly God begins to speak. We see is a combination of two things. It's a com combination of the writer or the narrator. But in the middle of it, everything suddenly, a prophetic anointing comes, kicks in, and suddenly is no longer him speaking anymore. But now he is speaking, is God speaking through him. And he says, when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, now we can we can understand this is the narrator trying to say the Lord killed every firstborn in Egypt, both man and animal. This is why I sacrifice to the Lord the first male offspring of every womb and redeemed each of my firstborn sons. Now, who, 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 who now? I sacrifice to the Lord the first male of, of, offering of every womb and redeem each man. We, 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 there's something very amazing because that is using the word Lord with capital L-O-R-D. We, we know there is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't want you to get lost. I don't want you to get confused at all in any way. But I need you to pay attention here. The Bible begins to tell us, the first time you see the word stubborn in the Bible, what does the stubborn mean? Stubborn. Today, I want to be able to deal with, with talking about the spirit of stubbornness. Sometimes you see people that like being stubborn. Today, if you are one of those people who are always stubborn, I want to put your notice. You see, what kills a human being? is when a disease becomes stubborn. When, when you try to treat it, we're talking that we are here today for, for, uh, for uh, 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 healing, after sunset healing miracle service. When a disease becomes stubborn, it will kill that person. When, what, what kills marriages is stubborn. Stubbornness, when one partner becomes stubborn, then there's no way you can rescue that marriage. There's no way you can rescue that relationship. You could be in a relationship, but if you go, one of the partner is stubborn, at the end of the day, that is the end of it. Now, what is stubbornness, first of all? What is stubbornness? I tried to go through my dictionary, and it told me that stubborn is showing a dogness, a dogged, not dogged determination. 
not change one's attitude or position on something, especially in spite of good reason to do it. It's where somebody is determined not to change one's attitude or the position on something, especially in spite of a good reason to do it. There is a good reason why you need to change your opinion. There is, there is a good reason why you need, there is a valid good reason why you need to change your attitude, but you choose not to. Sometimes, even when it's going to cost you, there is a, a reason, a good reason, a valid reason, but you choose not to. You choose not to change your attitude, you choose not to change your, your, you choose, you choose, you, I'll tell you one thing. If you, if you want me to let you know the names that are associated with the, with the, with the stubbornness, it's bad names. Like pig head. I, am I speaking to somebody here now? Give me my phone. Give me my phone. Someone sounds like we are. It's bad names. I, I, I went through the, the, what the dictionary describes about stubbornness. I'll tell you one thing. I've never seen many bad names which actually refer to stubbornness like that in the dictionary. You know, I've done linguistic many, many years. I've made, done all, I've done that many years and, and I did everything to do with languages. But when people say that you're stubborn, yeah, I'm, I'm stubborn. Hey, wait, wait, I'm, but I'm going to finish with you today. You hear the word stubborn, it says, listen, you turn to your neighbor, say neighbor. Some of you right now, you, you sit on that throne. Today I'm going to overthrow. And you know the, you know the, you know the, you know the, the only thing that in life that I've never been. I've been everything else apart from one, stubbornness. <laughs> I've been to many other departments. <laughs> That's why sometimes I speak to our youth. I said, you know, sometimes I say, did you ever know, you know, sometimes they put an attitude, whatever it is, and that teacher, at the end of the day, some of you are teachers, you are here. The teacher is going to get there suddenly. But what about you? And I, I discovered that when I was in school, though I was not one of the, though I was not a, a, one of the, huh? but, but guess what? I was always number one, number two in class. <laughs> Someone said, Hallelujah. The other day I met my school teacher. That teacher believed in me. She's the only one who believed in me. I met her on the train station. And she was there. She said, Oh, Clement. And she was telling everybody, Hey, everybody, this is my student. This is my pupil. My, you know, people is for us. This one is my pupil. And I am the only She was telling everybody, including the station master, I am the only one who believed in you. I saw this before everybody saw. But she said sometimes it was very confusing because sometimes I was, I was thinking maybe did I hope on the wrong thing. But now can you get, and everybody in the station, they were all, everybody was all happy clapping their hands. Am I speaking to somebody here? And then she asked me, so what did you bring me from Europe? I, first of all, I was not planning to meet her. <laughs> Am I speaking to somebody here? Somebody said, glory be to God. I was not planning to do what? To meet am i speaking to somebody here quickly i want to sh i want to share with you something quickly about stubbornness quickly and then i just wrote it here uh, i want to be able to share this with you it's going to help you today about where stubbornness is concerned now uh, this is what i wrote down listen the word stubbornness it means having showing a, a dogged determin a dog a dog dog determination not to change one's attitude or position or something especially in spite of good reason to do so the word it means to obstinate it means mulish it means mule it means headstrong willful strong-willed self-willed pig-headed bull-headed awkward difficult contrary perverse the other ones, uh, refractory, and many, many other more. And uh, 
stubbornness, everybody look at me here now. Stubbornness is, is one of the things in the Bible that actually made God destroy man. Now, let's look at this now. Look at this. The Bible says, when Pharaoh stubborn, the Lord passed born in Egypt, both man and animal. That is why I sacrificed to the Lord the first male of offering of every womb and redeemed each of my firstborn son. Put for me NIV, and I want to show you here. He says, now when the Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed every firstborn in Egypt. Stubborn. Pharaoh will not. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh represents a spirit. The man became so stubborn, so stubborn. And today there is somebody here. There is something that does not want to let you go. Today it must let you go. I said, today it must let you go. I said, today it must let you go. Someone said, glory be to God. And now watch here now. Exodus 14, verse 4. Exodus 14, verse 4. Exodus 14. It says, I will harden, make stubborn, strong Pharaoh's heart. That he will pursue them and I will gain honor and glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts. And the Egyptians shall know that I'm the Lord. I'm, I'm the Lord. I'm the Lord. And they did so. So what I want you to do here is quickly. I put, I'm using Amplified Bible. I'm going to take you through scriptures first. Let's just read through scriptures and then we'll come to the point. And it says here now, I will harden. Watch it. Next strong that he will pursue them and I will gain honor and the glory of a Pharaoh and all his host and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord and they did so. Now, let me give you a clue quickly. If you're reading that from a normal human point of view, you, you will see it's a story. But if you, if you read it from the spiritual expertise, it begins to make your heart tremble. And you ask, man of God, what do you mean? The Bible says, and I will harden, make stubborn, strong Pharaoh's heart, that he will pursue them, and I will gain honor and glory over Pharaoh, and all his hosts, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, and they did so. I mean, how can, how can you see all these things? How can you see these ten plagues, and still want to pursue these people, children of Israel? How can you be able to see frogs jumping everywhere? I mean, how can you, how can your own firstborn, firstborn, and you, you, everybody tells the firstborn of all the, all your male children, plus the firstborn of every animal, you know, they died on purpose and intentionally, and still pick up your best charioties and follow the children of Israel. But because we're in the deliverance ministry, I'm going to tell you something that you don't know, or which you need to understand. This is just going to make you exciting. Everything that God does, Satan practice it. Because he's always trying to be like God. This is one thing you should never forget. That is the reason why Satan knows the Bible like no one else. The witches know the Bible more than you. Even when Satan was being was tempting Jesus, he quoted, it, he, quoted, he quoted what we call today Psalms 91. He quoted all that. But you ask man of God, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Let me explain this to you. Could it be today that the, like the way God had him and made Pharaoh to become stubborn in his heart, could it be the devil? Could it be there is a spirit that has been released in your life too? Could it be today and you don't even see. You, you're not even, you, you're just going. I mean, the Bible begins to tell us, which, and I will gain honor and the glory of a Pharaoh, all his hosts, and the Egyptians shall know that I'm the Lord. Watch now, that he will pursue them. Sometimes I see people, you keep pursuing particular person, and I tell you, back off! You don't listen. That will be your downfall. 